Yeah, well, hello everyone, and welcome to this uh, open day uh, for the for the Nature Inspired Solutions MSc. Um, so, I, I first of all, I would like to start uh, with um, with a question for you uh, to try to explain you why here at UCL we like to look at nature for inspiration. So, uh, I have this picture here, and I would like uh, for you to think. What is the technologically most advanced instrument that you can see here? Um, now, I cannot see uh, your answers, but uh, my experience here when showing this to students is that they start arguing that it's a computer because it has the most complex functions, and some other would say that it's a phone because it's a miniaturized version of a laptop with almost the same functionalities. Uh, but I would argue that the most technologically advanced uh, instrument here in this picture is actually the plant. And the reason for me to say that is because if you look at the plant and if you think about it, it's able to self-assemble, it's able to self-heal, it self-replicates, it's made from renewable materials. It also uh, senses and responds to changes in the environment and it's powered without electricity. So this is telling us that uh, there is something that we can learn from, from natural materials, natural structures, natural processes uh, to uh, improve um, the, the, the functionalities and the sustainability of our human-made technology. Uh, but before we go into more details about the program itself, I would like to start with the home of our program, and that's UCL, that's the University College Lab. So we are almost a 200 year old university. We were established in 1826. And uh, actually our department will be a hundred years old next academic year. Um, at UCL, we like to be disruptive. And we have been like that throughout our entire history. So uh, we were the first university in England to admit students from any ethnic, uh, from, from any class or religious background. And we were also the first one to welcome student, uh, women to study uh, on equal terms uh, with men. Um, that excellence is uh, today still in internationally recognized um, and UCL is a diverse and open uh, university um, that is still delivering excellent and relevant research and teaching to the world. Um, as a result of, uh, of this uh, high quality, UCL actually ranks uh, pretty high on, on different uh, rankings uh, about universities. So we were actually ranked as eighth in the world uh, last year. And, um, and we are also top rated here at the UK. So we were actually number one in London for research power and uh, number two uh, in the UK. Uh, we ha have also uh, several Nobel Prizes uh, in our history. The most recent one actually from 2020. The, the, the historical campus uh, from, from UCL has been in Greece, in central London, and it's um, very close to St. Pancras and to the British Museum. Uh, however, uh, UCL is now undergoing its largest expansions in its, since its foundation. Uh, and we are opening a new campus in the east side of London. Um, and this is, I think, one of the most exciting things about this program. This campus is... Um, it will be, will be a hub for innovation, for culture, for the arts, for commerce, and it's a joint effort uh, from nine different faculties at UCL to create almost 60 new interdisciplinary uh, master's programs. Yeah, this this place, this this new campus is actually very easily commutable. Uh, it's a, a seven minute ride from San Pancras station. Uh, which is uh, the closest train station uh, from UCL. And it's also a 20 minute ride by Metro from Central London. So it's, it's, it's in a great location and it's a brand new campus with, uh, with amazing facilities. Um, specifically, um, this campus will be home of the Manufacturing Futures Lab. And I will talk about this a little bit uh, more in detail later. Uh, but this is a, a research hub uh, that is uh, that it aims at uh, driving strategic research on sustainable products and manufacturing processes for the future. So here is where um, you will be doing your research project in term three um, and uh, to, to showcase you the multidisciplinary character and philosophy of this new uh, expansion of UCL. This Manufacturing Futures Laboratory is actually bringing together research from different departments at UCL. So it's going to be a shared lab between chemistry, biochemical engineering, mechanical engineering, and chemical engineering together. 
Um, I have here some pictures to show you uh, the new campus and how it looks like. Uh, so this is the building where the masters and the research uh, will take place. So this is the, the specific building, which is called the March Gates building. But this building is in a, a, used in a campus, the, the UCL East campus. And you can see here a, a, a wider picture of, of the place where the building will be. So this is the March Gate building. You can see here on the right side of the screen. But there are also other buildings here shown um, from, from, from UCL that will host also other programs. And the, the, the place where the campus is is actually the old uh, Olympic Park from the Olympic Games of 2012. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing area in London. It's a, it's a great place uh, to live and to study. Now, specifically about us, we are part of the Faculty of Engineering Sciences. And uh, this faculty uh, encompasses uh, 10 different departments that you can see here. Specifically, we are the Chemical Engineering Department, um, which, uh, as you can see there, is ranked as fourth in the UK. And um, it is, it is a, a great department to, to study and to work. And um, one, one difference that I would like to highlight with other top departments in the UK is that um, our department is, is in a much larger university than most of the other top ranking universities. So you, you will be in contact with departments uh, and with the students from, from many different departments and many different disciplines. And it's also located in London, which is an amazing place to live. Chemical engineering uh, is also a very, broad department. So our department works as uh, across many different research fields. So that means that we not only welcome students with a typical chemical engineering background. If you're not a chemical engineering, that's that's totally okay. Uh, we work with physicists, with chemists, with uh, engineers from other engineering disciplines, uh, with doctors. And um, I have already said this, uh, but uh, the, the program that we're launching now aims at being uh, multidisciplinary. So our objective is that no matter what your background is, as long as you have a science or engineering background, you will be able to learn and apply nature-inspired solutions to a topic of your interest. Now, specifically about the chemical engineering department, um, it is a very popular department among students. As you can see in the slides, we have different uh, bachelor's and master's programs and PhD programs as well. Uh, that are highly demanded and, and, and that have lots of uh, student applications every day. We have traditionally offered uh, two MSc programs. Uh, one is called the Chemical Process Engineering and the other one, the Global Management of Natural Resources. And we are now launching these three new programs that I am showing here at the top of the list uh, at the UCL East campus at, at, this, uh, loca at this new location from, from UCL. Uh, and one of these masters is the, the Nature Inspired Solutions Masters that we are presenting today. If you're curious about some of the research that we develop uh, here at Chemical Engineering at UCL, I encourage you to take a look at the taster lectures that we have in YouTube. So we have a, a, a channel in YouTube where we have different researchers from our department describing the different research that, that we do here. So um, I encourage you to take a look at this channel and, and learn more about the, the the different types of research that we do here. But also uh, here at the bottom of the page, you see that um, yeah, if you look at the numbers shown there, you'll find that um, we are uh, uh, very focused on research in our department. And this is shown by, by the high number of postdocs and PhD students and academics that do world leading research. And this is uh, the reason why UCL uh, scores so high in the rankings that I showed uh, just a few slides before. So, Research is uh, a core activity in our department, and um, we have uh, multiple researchers and students working on cutting edge research that uh, we group into these six uh, different areas. And one of those areas, as you can see, is uh, the nature inspired chemical engineering research. We also have three research centers the Center for Nature Inspired Engineering, or CNI the Surgeon Center for Process Systems Engineering, and the Electrochemical Innovation Lab. So as you can uh, easily imagine, um, our embassy actually stems from the success and the experience from the Center of Nature Inspired Engineering, uh, where over, uh, from over a decade, uh, we have been creating pioneering breakthroughs in science and technology uh, that seek to address the grand challenges uh, which are challenges related to energy, to materials, to sustainable manufacturing, to healthcare, to environment, 
Um, so uh, a little bit more about these these grand challenges that I just mentioned. Um, well, basically, grand, grand challenges are problems that uh, require our immediate attention uh, and for which we need disruptive solutions uh, so that we can make the world a sustainable, a habitable, and an equitable place for everyone. There are several lists of grand challenges. UCL has its own uh, grand challenges list that you, that you can see here on the left side of the screen, but also the United Nations have uh, created these uh, sustainable development goals. Um, the Chinese Academy of Engineering or the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK or the National Academy of Engineering in the US or even the British government, they all have also created different kinds of lists with different number of elements, but they all have in common that they, they, compri they are comprised of um, pressing challenges that require immediate action and for which business as usual is no longer an option and we need disruptive technologies. Um, so these grand challenges are actually the things that interest us, the things that we like to, to address and the things that we like to research. Um, and so therefore, these are the kind of things for which you would be, you, you would be looking for solutions in the program uh, that, we are, uh, that we are discussing today. Now, these grand challenges uh, that I just mentioned uh, can sometimes make you feel powerless uh, because they are very complex and you don't know how how we can actually address them. Um, but there is a methodology that is developed here at UCL that is called the Nature Inspired Solutions Methodology. And what this uh, methodology does it, is that it looks and learns from the materials, the architectures, the dynamics that you find in natural systems. And you try to extract uh, learnings from those systems to design and synthesize innovative and superior solutions to our human-made technologies. Um, this, as I say here in this slide, is a, a unique approach that is pioneered at UCL at the Center for Nature Inspiring Innovation. And to give you a few examples of how this works is, um, for instance, we can look at lungs or kidneys or trees. They all have uh, similar branching architectures. However, uh, lungs are used to exchange gases between air and blood. Kidneys are used to purify blood. And trees have a supporting role and also deliver nutrients to and from the leaves. This shows us that uh, by learning from the designs and the working principles of these seemingly different structures with seemingly different roles, we can develop solutions that we can use, for instance, to uh, develop better gasification reaction reactors, better membranes for water filtration, or better architected materials for catalysis or biomedicine. Uh, another example is, uh, cancer development and the spread of epidemics and the population growth, they all are extremely different types of events, but they can all be modeled and described using similar dynamic models. So here, what we like to do is to understand these transport networks, these scalable architectures, these collective dynamics, and this robustness and adaptability that you find in many different natural systems, uh, try to understand the universal principles of those systems and then try to apply them to a topic of your interest. And that can be renewable energy, materials, medicine, architecture. Um, so in this sense, the program is uh, built to uh, provide you with uh, fundamental learnings that then you can apply in a flexible manner to uh, the applications that you would like to pursue. To give you uh, an idea of, of the different type of applications that we can address with these nature-inspired solutions, you can see here uh, these five different examples. And I'm, I'm not gonna describe them in detail, but I just want to show you um, yes, it, the five um, success stories here from the Center of Nature-Inspired Engineering at UCL uh, to, to, for you to understand um, the, 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 the breadth of uh, topics that we can address with these nature-inspired solutions. So for instance, we can look at the architecture from lungs and use that as inspiration to develop better performing fuel cells. We can also uh, look at cell membranes and why they do not fall and they do not uh, accumulate uh, falling uh, on their surface to develop better filtration membranes for water purification. We can also look at the complexity of natural systems and populations to develop better cancer treatments. We can also look at the architecture of trees to develop better uh, fluidized bed reactors, or we can look at the, uh, at the structure of leaves to create uh, structured catalysts. So 
you can see that the type of topics that we can address and that we can improve by using a nature-inspired solutions methodology is actually very, very, very broad. Um, so more specifically about this program, uh, this uh, MSc is a one-year postgraduate program. It is um, research-related, so uh, this is actually one of the things that I like uh, the most about UCL and one of its big selling points, I think. Um, everything that you learn in the class, we then try to relate back to cutting edge research done at UCL. So we you will not only learn something in the class, you will also connect that with real life examples of how those learnings are applied to make better technologies. Um, so after this program, you will be equipped with the skills that you need to drive bio-inspired innovation that you can use to tackle grand challenges related to, as I said before, many different fields, manufacturing, process engineering, materials, medicine, water, energy, architecture. Um, and these are actually highly demanded skills by industry, by, by, by startups, uh, by academia. So this, this program will give you a unique competitive edge um that will that will help you find the uh, uh, job after the program now if you are more interested in in the kind of research that we develop here uh, i actually encourage you to check these two videos that we have on youtube one of them is specifically about the program which is the first one on the list and the second one describes more in detail um, different kinds of research avenues that are pursued now at uh, the center for nature inspired engineering here at ucl uh, so please, if, if you want to learn more about this specific type of research and the different kinds of uh, topics and challenges that we are addressing here at UCL, please check these two videos and you will find more, more useful information. There. Now, at the end of this program, uh, you will be able to uh, recognize solutions and challenges where a nature-inspired solutions methodology could be helpful in, in coming up with uh, improved, uh, with, with new and more sustainable solutions. Uh, you will also learn how to implement those fundamental principles from nature to solve these complex engineering uh, and design problems. You will also work in, inter in interdisciplinary teams uh, to solve engineering problems and will develop also leadership skills to solve uh, these problems. Uh, and these are highly desired skills by, by employers. We, we see that there is an increase in the demand of uh, profiles of uh, graduates that have a multidisciplinary uh, language that they can talk uh, the language of different fields and communicate across fields uh, to develop new solutions. Uh, during your program, you will also uh, present uh, uh, in oral, in writing, and in groups um, the different uh, um, coursework that you do. You will also plan and manage and deliver a research project in term three. You will meet, work, and learn with people from all around the world. And also very importantly, even though it's not uh, directly related uh, to the academic content of the program, you will also get to live in London, which is one of the most vibrant cities in the world. It is a truly global city. You find people from everywhere, uh, cultures from everywhere, and it's, it's, it's an amazing place to live. Uh, so it's... Um, I, I think it is a great city to have a experience as a student, you have all sorts of things you can do here in London, and also you can you can travel and visit many different places from here. It has fast access by rail and by air to, to many different places. Um, anywhere in the UK is very easily accessible, and you can also jump on the Eurostar and be in Paris in two hours, or in Brussels, or in Amsterdam. It's, it's very well connected also. So you not only will have an amazing multicultural experience here in London, you will also be able to visit many other places uh, that are close by and very welcome. Now, a little bit more about uh, the structure of the program is shown here in this slide. So the program is, um, is uh, distributed across three terms. The first two terms uh, are focused on teaching. So you will have some compulsory modules uh, marked here with the letter C. Um, and in color yellow or, or blue. And then you will also have some optional modules uh, that are shown in green. Uh, for the optional modules, uh, we have some modules that are specific to the program, which are the ones uh, shown um, in, in red on the, at, the, at the bottom of the screen. But you will also have some other uh, modules from that are general for, for the new campus, for UCL East. And those topics are 
related to life cycle assessment to sustainability and there you will also be able to 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 go to class with um, people from other programs so we have different choices um, for you to tailor uh, your program and then on term three you will you will be developing a research project in the lab now as i said before uh, this research project will be uh, will take place during term three in the manufacturing futures lab um, and we do that uh, under the supervision of a member of the academic staff of our department with the aim that you enhance your abilities to guide a project and deliver research, uh, research results. Um, as I said before, this will be host, uh, housed in the Manufacturing Futures Lab. Um, and this laboratory is focusing on future proofing the manufacturing and processes and materials for the future. Um, and it's a collaborative department. It's a lab that actually literally has no walls. It's a mixture of four different departments. We have researchers from chemical engineering, from mechanical engineering, from biochemical engineering, and from chemistry. And we all work together under the same space with no walls between the labs so that we can benefit from the synergies that bringing uh, researchers from different fields creates. So this is in an amazing place to study. And I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to do a research project here. Regarding the teaching and the assessment styles of the program, well, this program is a, um, is a, uh, it's designed to be face-to-face -face and it will be delivered on, on the UCL East campus. It will include tutorials, workshops, laboratory practicals, and it will also be enriched with some online materials uh, that you can work through at your own pace. And this includes uh, some videos and some reading materials. Um, and then also in terms of assessments, uh, you will have different sorts of assessments. So in some courses, in some modules, you will have coursework, uh, reports, projects, exams, group works, pieces. It, uh, it varies from one module to another, but you will be exposed to different kinds of uh, assessments. Now, to do this, we have assembled an amazing team. We have people um, and with very different backgrounds, with uh, experience in very different fields. Uh, and uh, this will be the team that will be in charge of delivering the teaching of this program. Um, so I myself, one of the lecturers, but the program is actually led by, by Dr. Yang Lan, um, which you can see here on the, on the left of the screen. And we all have very different backgrounds uh, from academia, from industry, worked in many different fields in process engineering, materials, healthcare, renewable energy. And uh, yeah, this, this is uh, a very nice team uh, that will be in charge of, of delivering uh, this program. In terms of careers, um, I hope to have convinced you now that uh, you will be a truly multidisciplinary person after, after studying here. And that means that um, after finishing this program, you, you might be able to find jobs in many different areas. And I'm showing here on the left side of the screen a few of them. So you can have manufacturing, engineering, energy, materials, uh, healthcare, uh, architecture, food, water, pharmaceuticals, you name it. It's as long as um, you can implement a nature-inspired solutions methodology, you can basically work in, in many, many different fields. Um, and uh, typical destinations for our graduates after the program include um, either a professional career, and that can be in industry, in startups, uh, creating your own business, going into policy. Um, and then also you could decide to, to, to work further on, on academic research and pursue a PhD after this. Um, there are also some, some funding, some scholarships available if you want to, to, to apply to them. Um, I cannot give you very specific details because many of these scholarships are actually country specific, but I encourage you to check uh, the different uh, links uh, shown here in this slide and see if there is something that, that would be suitable for you uh, because that there are funding options. So you should uh, definitely explore them and see if there is anything that you could apply to. Uh, and also, uh, if you have any specific questions, um, I encourage you to contact uh, one of these two email addresses uh, shown here at the bottom of the of the slide um, and ask them whatever question you have about funding.
So I think uh, this brings me to the end of the presentation. So uh, more information can be found in these links that, uh, that I'm showing here. Uh, you can also follow our department in, in one of our social media pages that are shown here. And um, yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you very much.